A service call came in for AHU3. It's not making supplier set point and space is hot. Controls are telling the valve to open, but supply temp is not coming down. Okay, so this is what we got from the customer as part of our service ticket. Uh, all right, so we're not making supplier temp on three. Why don't we go start off with the chiller plant data? So let's go look at the chiller plant. I'm coming in here. Let's just make sure we have pumps and everything on. So we can see it's a 95 degree day. Both cooling towers show to be on. Uh, we've got two condenser water pumps on. Let's see what our actual chiller data looks like. So we're shooting for 44 degrees set point. We have a 42 evaporator saturated temp with a leaving chilled water of 44. So we're making set point on chiller one. Uh, we've got a two degree approach. Looks fine. Our DPs on both of our heat exchangers look good. Chiller status is normal. Um, we can see same thing, 41 evap saturated. Leaving water is 44, so a three degree approach. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, so this is, we have a purge unit on this one, so it'd be a low pressure. Purge is an auto, 24 hours, five minutes, status is normal. So the chiller looks fine. Uh, we've got two primary pumps based off of the schematic. We see down here, prim uh, pump one and pump two are both on. So we know both of these should be running. We've got two secondary pumps on, so these are all of our secondaries. So I would say it's probably fine. Our, our supply and return water for the loop coming in and out of the plant, 44 and 50. Okay, so 50 tells me that we don't have a ton of, uh, like we don't have a ton of load. And looking at the RLA and such and the, and the IGVs or PRV, so PRV that tells me this is a YK. Um, but looking at this data, like our chillers are not fully loaded whatsoever. I mean, our entering water on both chillers is, is 50 degrees. So let's see, our options would be, okay, what is what issues do I have with the plant? Uh, chillers aren't staging up, not enough secondary pumps on, uh, chill water set point too high. I mean, 44, I would say it should be fine. Return water temp too low, so 50 degrees. I mean... That's an option. Why don't we start with, okay, secondary pumps. We don't see enough secondary pumps. Uh, so what metric decides whether we need more secondary pumps? Uh, well, we could have loop differential, the maximum speed, or pumps not working. Uh, I mean, loop differential is what is going to control this. So, yeah, so the secondary pump is controlled based off of loop DP. Looking at our DP compared to set point, we are good. So additional pumps are not required current conditions. Let's go review the data again. All right, so I know that from a previous page I've looked at here, the loop DP set point is supposed to be 10 degrees for this plant. Or not 10 degrees, 10 PSI. So we've got a DP of 10 already. So we are making set point via that. Um... Maybe the return water is too low. So the plant's return water is directly correlated to the load and flow at the AHU. In this case, we don't have control of the return. Yeah, right. So, I mean, that makes sense. It's based off of the air handler load. So, fair enough. All right. So, let's just go back. What are some of our other options? Why don't we see... We could go look at the chill water pumps. You know, since we're there uh, close to the chillers, we can see right here... Okay, so these are two primaries, chill water pump one and two. Uh, we've got chill water pump three, which would be a secondary pump based off of that schematic. It's off, no hurt. So we do see VFD. So these are variable speed. Okay, and, and the two pumps that are on are at 50 hertz. Um, I mean, we could we could dive into these. You know, so not enough pumps on. But it's gonna, it, yeah. So it's explaining the DP again, uh, which we we saw on the on the main chiller page. So why don't we just go back and let's look at the AHU, or the overview of, I'm assuming, yeah, so this would be all of them. Uh, let's see. So is this, this might help us determine, is this a plant-related issue or is this a air handler? Like, is this the whole thing having an issue or is it just 
the one particular air handler. So the call was for air handler three. We can see our supply air temp is 60 degrees. Hmm. And we know that, again, from the pr a previous page we reviewed here, that the supply air set point is 55 on a lot of these. So AHU1 is supply air 55. Chill water valve looks good. Our entering and leaving water, all those look good. AHU2 is very similar. And so is AHU4. So it really does look like uh, AHU3 has an issue. So let's go ahead. Yeah, AHU3. Right. AHU3 does not look like it's doing well. It's maintaining static pressure, but the supply air is high with a maxed out chill water actuator signal. Uh, right, so this would be an automation view, so that'd be your, your signal being sent to it. Add to those temps, the rise on the water temp seems very high given the valve supply temp. Right, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's very odd that we would have a fully open valve but have a huge temperature uh, differential across the coil. So this needs a deeper look. All right, well, to take a deeper look then, why don't we hit back? And we know we had, let's go look at the actual air handler this, that was complained about. And then we can dive into this here, right? So I won't actually complete this call. What this is, this is a service simulator that I have spent three years developing and have finally and I'm able to bring it to you. And this is just kind of showcasing one of the trial options that you could go through as a troubleshooting uh, process. Now, once you got past this one, this is technically call two of the Hopkins Center. We're gonna actually practice a recovery of a water-cooled chiller, specifically the YK in that Hopkins plant. So you get to choose, okay, would you rather do a direct recovery? Would you rather do a push-pull? And I'll guide you through and provide feedback just like you were seeing with uh, 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 just a second ago there. Let's dive into, let's say we want to go with a direct recovery. All right. So I'm showing you, okay, these are the different connection points you could choose from to do that recovery. And we want to go with, let's say, I want point three. Okay, well, this is what point three is. And here's some feedback on why we might not want to choose point three as our best place to do that recovery from. And we'll con that process will continue as we work through the rest of the call. This simulator is built directly off of my career. I've got over a decade working on chiller systems. And this simulator will capture what we face as, as technicians in the field as a whole. From the air handler to the chillers, to the pumps, to the towers, the piping, everything that we deal with. I've, I've made this simulator to be as similar and as close to that as possible so that you have the ability to go in. You can navigate a bunch of different paths and a lot of them are gonna be the wrong path and we have that exact same scenario in real life. We have all the wrong paths we get to choose but each path may give us some information or some data that points us in the right direction that we need to go to make the right diagnosis and that is the objective is to help you and give you guidance along the way. I want you to improve your analytic skills and your ability to process the data given to you in a facility, at a plant, so that you can work through that faster and more effectively getting to the right calls. And this is something that I actually do to train my own team that I've brought up over the years. We get on site and the exact process we go through here where you try to make an assessment and I give you feedback, that's what you're going to have inside of the simulator. That is what it's built to do. One of my favorite quotes so far from one of the testers that's helped me kind of clean this up and finish it out here at the end is, is this is Dustin G. I really think this is something the industry is missing. I just got into the field two years ago and wish this was created. It has the goosebumps choose your own adventure situation, which is really how it is in the field. Even if you aren't sure which way to go, you get pieces of data that help you point in the right direction. That is what I want to capture with this. That is the core essence and exactly what Dustin was saying, where I want this to feel as it actually feels, how I felt. Like I was, that's part of what's taken so long is communicating that real experience into something that's not just more just junk. It's not just something to sell you, but it's actually going to provide a measurable difference in your ability on site in the field in experiencing situations that are going to help you work through it. They're progressively more difficult. So 
We're starting off with, there's a trial uh, section you can go check out. So that, well, that's at chilleracademy.com. This is the Chiller Service Simulator. There is a set of trials. So I'll take you through the Hopkins facility as a tutorial and as a trial. So you can really see how this program is. And then from there, we'll get into Warehouse 12 and so forth and the different customer sites. And every customer site will have a bank of service calls that you can run and try different scenarios, different experiences, and go through different service procedures per each site. And each site themselves, and in addition to each call, just will get more advanced and harder as you go. So I'd love for you to consider this for yourself. I've put a lot of effort and a lot of work into this. I'm going to be releasing routine additional new calls. So even after you sign up, it's only the beginning. This is going to be a long-term project for me. All that's at chilleracademy.com. I'd really love to, to work with you over there.